Okay, I'm here to talk to you guys about how I self-published my first knitting pattern book called Craft Work Knit. Some people might think, I have all these knitting pattern ideas, and what am I going to do with them? Do I submit them to magazines? You might think, people in magazines don't care about my ideas, or they reject them. So you might want to self-publish. What do you need to self-publish? Well, you need to fund yourself, so you work a job 33% of the time, full-time. Then you work on your other work, which is the knitting, 33% of the time. You might get a little sleep in, you have to commute, and then you spend 10% of your time freaking out, usually about the book. So uh, anyway, I work in content first, content before style. Some people envision their book, they make the cover. No, I want the content first. So in March, April of this past year, I started swatching. These are all little test knit pieces with cables and stripes. Out of the swatches come mittens, the first pattern in my book called Go Dutch styled after the uh, Dutch speed skater team in the 2010 Winter Olympics. I made these after one of the guys was disqualified after going out of his lane. I felt really bad for him, and I made them. <laughs> um, second pattern in the book. This is called the button coil. Again, came out of a swatch I worked with a cable I liked. This is my friend Wendy, final photo from the book modeling it. So we're going from swatch to final product in the book. A lot of times with my swatches, I make sketches. This was rejected from several magazines. Um, but you can see that I did a lot of work and um, was able to make some swatches, envision what I wanted to do, and um, worked it up in Briar Rose Fibers, who were nice enough to provide me the yarn. And the final product is right up here. Instructions are in my book. That's my friend Wendy, again, modeling. It's nice to have friends who are very photogenic. If you're going to self-publish, they will do it for free or beer. Um, speaking of beer. So a lot of good can come from self-publishing your designs. Um, another one of my inspirations is 70s punk rock style, proto-punk style. This is Johnny Rotten. You can see wearing a fabulous mohair sweater on the Bill Grundy show in 1976, for which they used profanity, and the headlines the next day read The Filth and the Fury. This is the sweater I made based on the Bill Grundy sweater, a version of which is available in my book for men and for women. So I took that idea, sketched it out, swatched it, and decided I wanted to make something with a little bit more elegance than the initial sweater, but still wanted to use the same idea. A few more sketches and swatches. This is a baby jacket. Again, this was a reject, um, but it's been very successful since. Um, I had the idea of making a baby jacket based on the outfit Steve McQueen wore in the movie Le Mans. So it's like a baby biker jacket, and here you see it. <laughs> You get to pick your own babies when you self-publish, and I chose this one. So here you see the layout of the page in the book um, and how it turned into the pattern. Uh, there's, uh, on to the next one. Uh, Joseph Elbers was another big inspiration of mine. I've always been a big fan of his work. Um, his color theory and um, his portrait of a square painting. So I looked at a lot of his work before doing my book and did several patterns based on his work. Um, this is most of one of the patterns called the Albers Cowl, which is probably the simplest pattern in the book. It's all knit. It's knit in one piece. You make three squares of any colors of your choosing. You can wear it around your neck and really show off your knitting and your craft and uh, the colors you love. I also made a really huge piece. Um, this is the Albers Shawl. It's done in proportion to his Portrait of a Square series. And um, these colors here are actually based on one of his paintings. And it's really massive. Um, that's my sister modeling it. She also did the design for the book. She's a graphic designer. Um, so then you order a mess of books, um, which I did from lulu.com. You don't pay until you order. Then you order, and you order 200, and they show up in five giant boxes. And you have this credit card statement um, for all of the books you've ordered, and you have this pile. So you take it on the road to go sell it. I um, packed my things into this duffel bag and went on trunk shows and went across the nation to Toronto and Seattle and New York City. and. Um, various places around Massachusetts and Ithaca, New York and Rhinebeck and uh, laid everything out for people to see. And yarn stores ended up carrying my book and people would buy the book from me at trunk shows and if I were at craft shows they would come and tap me and say, do you have your book? And I would sell it to them out of my bag um, even though I wasn't a vendor. So anyway, <laughs> you need to um, promote yourself, which here I was at Nitty City. Um, part of the Young Designer Showcase in New York City. So you need to just get out there and I would walk into book, I would walk into yarn stores with my book and say, hey look, I made this, do you want it in your store? And uh, surprisingly people did. Um, <laughs> this is Let Us Knit in Toronto where I also had my trunk show so people could actually see the items, they could look through the book, they could see me wearing the items, they could try them on. So I was in Toronto for about a week um, with my garments and here it is. Now I have a book. It is in stores. It is available through my website, annweaverknits.com, and um, probably at your local yarn store. So if you have any questions, you can ask me.